Now, what I'd like to suggest, you're not going to get only one car in your lifetime, but you're going to get one body and one mind, and that's all you're going to get. And that body and mind feels terrific now, but it has to last you a lifetime. The most important thing is to decide, is to be able to define which ones you can come to an intelligent decision on and which ones are beyond your capacity to evaluate. You don't have to be right about thousands and thousands and thousands of companies. You only have to be right about a company, couple. I'm, I met Bill Gates on July 5th, 1991. We were out in Seattle and Bill said, you've got to have a computer. And I said, why? And he said, well, he said, you can do your income tax on it. I said, I don't have any income. Berkshire doesn't pay a dividend. Uh, he said, well, you can keep track of your portfolio. And I said, I only have one stock. I said, I, I mean, <laughs> uh, and he says, it's going to change everything. And I said, well, will it change whether people chew gum? And he said, well, probably not. And I said, well, will it change what kind of gum they chew? And not. And I said, well, then I'll stick to chewing gum and you stick to computers. You know? <laughs> uh, I don't have to understand all kinds of business. There's all kinds of business I don't understand. But there's thousands of opportunities there. I did understand the Bank of America, you know, and, 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 uh, and I'll be able, I, I'm, I'm able to do that. Uh, I'm able to understand some given percentage, but Ted Williams wrote a book called The Science of Hitting. And in The Science of Hitting, he's got a diagram, shows him at the plate, and he's got the strike zone divided into 77 squares, each the size of a baseball. And he says, if I only swing at pitches in my sweet zone, which he shows there, and he has what his batting average would be, which is 400. If he had to swing at low outside pitches, but still in the, in the strike zone, his average would be 230. He said the most important thing in hitting is waiting for the right pitch. Now, he was at a disadvantage because if the count was 0-2 or 1-2 and or so on, even if that ball was down where he was only going to bat 230, he had to swing at it. In investing, there's no called strikes. People can throw Microsoft at me and you know, you, you name it, any, any stock, General Motors, uh, and I don't have to swing. And nobody's going to call me out on call strikes. I only get a strike called if I swing at a pitch and miss. So I can wait there and look at thousands of companies day after day, and only when I see something I understand, and when I like the price at which it's selling, then if I swing, if I, if I hit it fine, if I miss it, 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 it it's, it's, it's a strike. But it's an enormously advantageous game, and it's a terrible mistake to think you have to have an opinion on everything. You only have to have an opinion on a few things. In fact, I've told students, if when they got out of school, they got a punch card with 20 punches on it, and that's all the investment decisions they got to make in their entire life, they would get very rich because they would think very hard about each one. And you don't need 20 right decisions to get very rich. You know, four or five will probably do it over time. So uh, I don't worry too much about the things I don't understand. If you understand some of these businesses that are coming along and can spot things on, if you, if you can spot on Amazon, for example, I mean, it's a tremendous accomplishment what Jeff Bezos has done. And I tip my hat to him, he's a wonderful businessman, he's a good guy too. But could I have anticipated that he would be the success and 10 others wouldn't be? I'm not good enough to do that. But I don't, fortunately I don't have to. You know, I, I don't have to form an opinion on on Amazon, and I do. I did form an opinion on the Bank of America, and I form an opinion on Coca-Cola. I mean, Coca-Cola has been around since 1886. There's 1.8 billion, 1.8 billion eight-ounce servings of Coca-Cola products sold every day. Now, if you take one penny and get one penny extra, that's 18 million dollars a day, and 18 million times 365 is 7 billion three less 730 billion or, or, or 6 billion 570 million dollars. So annually, 6 billion 570 million dollars from one penny. Do you think Coca-Cola is worth a penny more than, you know, Joe's Cola? I think so. So, uh, you know, and I've got about 127 years of history that would indicate it. So those are the kind of decisions I like to make. And you may have an entirely different field of expertise than I would have and probably much more up-to-date in terms of the kind of businesses that we're seeing evolve. And you can get very rich if you just understand a few of them and, and, and understand their future. What is it that you two share? 
What makes this friendship so satisfying for both of you? Well, I think we both certainly share a curiosity about the world, and we come from two different but related worlds. Uh, so we had, I think we probably spent about 10 hours of this one hour visit that Bill was scheduled on July 5th, 1991. <laughs> His mother had to talk him into it. And uh, uh, we weren't halfway, I mean, we'd gotten no place in terms of our eventual agenda just in, in that time. In fact, the governor of Washington came by and Bill's dad had to come into the bedroom and pull us out of it. We didn't want to, he was a little embarrassed we were talking about. It's, well, we have fun to start with. Right? I mean, that, that every relationship should, should have a lot of fun in it. And, and, we, we, we find the world in just such an interesting place. So we like to compare notes on it. When we have compare notes, we have a lot of fun doing it. Part of the time, as I remember the conversation, by the way, there's a remarkable documentary about Warren, which is on HBO. Uh, I think it premieres on January Monday. 30th, yeah. on Monday. Yeah. Uh, you should take time to take a look at it. Uh, Bill's involved in that, and, and you will see, in a sense, it's called, I think, Becoming Warren Buffett? Yeah, that's what it's called. Because. <laughs> <laughs> took me 86 years, but I got there. Because. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing well on it, though, aren't you? Well, so far, yeah. <laughs> but the best uh, is yet to come. <laughs> and, and one of the things that happened tonight, Bill, was that I guess your dad uh, at the dinner said, you know, what is it you, what's been the most important quality for you? And you found out that you and Warren had the same word. Yeah, I think curiosity, uh, which Warren mentioned, is a, an amazing thing where you try and predict what's going to happen and then uh, when it doesn't, you sort of think, <laughs> well, uh, you know, that uh, drug didn't get invented, that stock didn't go up, that uh, approach wasn't popular. What's, what is it about my model of the world that's wrong? You know, who could I talk to? What could I read? And, and the things that have happened since 1991, uh, mostly good things, yeah. uh, have been amazing and just, you know, so much fun to talk about. Uh, you know, so, you know, it, we read the news and we think, God, what did Warren yeah. think about that? <laughs> you both are readers. You both, you read all the time, all day, Warren. Bill, uh, you're, Read a reader. You also do a lot of sort of courses online as well. I mean, what does that have done? What has that done for your life? The sense of constantly learning. Well, go ahead, Bill. It's an incredible time to be a learner. I remember when I was young, you know, I had the World Book, which is one of Warren's products, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it was very good. But you know, I always felt like God. I, I, I want to get into this in more depth. I want to understand it better today. The videos that are online and the yeah. courses that you can buy with the very best professors, it's phenomenal. You know, take a subject like weather or climate change, you know, or what's going on in economics, what's known, what's not known. Now with the foundation, a lot of what I need to learn is about biology, making vaccines and uh, what's going on with these, these various diseases. This is a, a phenomenal time to be a curious uh, person. The information that's out there, you know, I have a, my, my biggest problem is that I stay up too late because I'm reading and then I'm a little bit tired the next day. Uh, the other thing that, that you share other than reading is optimism. Uh, you believe in America. Absolutely. You, know, you have said to me more than once, uh, I would give up a year of my life just to know what the next 50 is going to be like. Yeah, even the next four now. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> why'd you pick four? <laughs> I don't know, just a number that came to me. <laughs> the, uh, uh, it is it is just fascinating what's happened just in my lifetime. You know, yeah. in, in the eighty-six years. I, I should mention one thing about reading. Uh, it was at the library here at Columbia yeah. that I wish I spent probably more time than any other uh, student. Uh, I, I, I lived there practically, but you know, I pulled the book out there, happened to be Who's in America, and it told me something about my professor, Benjamin Graham, and then I looked up and I went to the library and I said, I want to look more, learn more about this because I learned this over here. Mm -hmm. That changed my whole life. You know, we own Geico now <laughs> uh, because of, uh, of that librarian directing me to some other book and then following through on that. Mm -hmm. I, it's the chance, I, I, I read about one-fifth the pace the bill does, but I still spend five or six hours a day reading. I mean, it just, you can learn so much. I particularly love biography, just, uh, you know, to be able 
to live the lives of these people that have been so, see them so extraordinary, the lessons and the, you know, the discouragements they face, just everything about it. So I just, I, you can't get enough of reading it. Uh, what surprises you most about Bill? Uh, that's an interesting question. I guess what really surprised me is that initially, is we just found so many things to connect on. But, uh, uh, he did try to sell me a computer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that was, that's probably the only sale he didn't make, although the computer changed my life for the better in a big way subsequently. But, uh, well, he, he, he just had the same curiosity. Yeah. That, uh, and the other word you have used is focus. Well, the focus is no question mm -hmm. about it. I mean, he, yeah. both of us, got to where we are in a big, big way because of focus. Bill, what surprised you about Warren? I was so amazed that he comes to investing with this broad model of the world. So one of the first questions he asked me was, hey, Microsoft's a small company, IBM's this huge company. Why can you do better? Why can't they uh, beat you at the software game that you're playing? And I, I always, you know, you know, every day I was thinking about, okay, what, what advantage do we have? What do we do? But nobody ever asked me that question. And we talked about the economics of software, which is a you know, very uh, different and special thing. And he could relate it to things that he'd seen. And, you know, I didn't understand banking, why some get ahead and some don't. And so he was able to put that in very uh, clear terms. And so I, I found somebody whose model was rich enough that it, it helped me understand things that I really wanted to know. And we could laugh about things that were a surprise to us. I'd say his humility and his sense of humor really stood out in this incredible way. I mean, he enjoys what he does and he shares that with other people. And even, you know, when I ask questions that are pretty naive that he's probably been asked 50 no, times, he's very nice about, it. well, it took me a long time to figure this out, Bill, but here's how it works. <laughs> I, I tried Bill out with some non-transitive dice. <laughs> and I'd read about him in Scientific America or someplace, and there were only two people in the world in the history of these dice that actually figured it out while I was trying to take their money from them. And one was the leading symbolic logician in the world, and the other was a drunk who didn't really know any better and asked the wrong question. But Bill said, wait a second, you choose first, and the game was over. <laughs> uh, you, you taught him, not you didn't teach him, but you brought him into a great appreciation of bridge. Yeah, he'd play bridge, but uh, the family is very big on games. His family was very, very big on games, and and uh, and so we, we we played bridge together, and we played in China, going down the great rivers when we were supposed to be looking at the scene. We but we had a good time playing bridge.